Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here tonight. So, for the ones of you who don't know me, my name is Alan Zucconi, I'm a lecturer in artificial intelligence and a science communicator. Now, if this is the first time you are watching this, well, welcome to Game Dev Graveyard. Now, this is the place where we talk about failed projects and, you know, various games that didn't make it. And so far, I've always been shown my games, the games I've made, the projects that I've made and actually, well, didn't make it. But uh, tonight is going to be quite different for a couple of reasons. The first one is that, well, we have a new graphics, which I hope you will... I uh, hope you will like, I hope you will enjoy. Um, let me know somewhere in the comments. Um, but most importantly, importantly, we actually have our first guest, which is Federico Fasci, if you have followed me from Twitter and you have seen the, um, the messages. Now, um, Federico Fasci is a game designer and a creative technologist, and is currently leading the MA in independent games at Goldsmiths uh, University of London, which it's also the place um, where I work. So we're actually we're actually colleagues, which hopefully uh, will make will make this um, much much easier. Um, now, I think without further ado, um, we can probably um, introduce Fede, so he can talk a bit about uh, what he's doing and um, what he's up to. So, hi Fede, how are you doing? Hello, uh, I'm doing really well, uh, given the circumstances, I think. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I'm really glad to be here, so thank you for inviting me. Um, and yeah, I would like to yeah talk a little bit about what I do. I'm Basically, I'm a game designer and a creative technologist, which means that I never, like, I, I worked on games, but then I kind of moved around, like, bordering kind of situation. I worked in uh, museum design, I worked... In, uh, with The Guardian in VR, I did like many different things that involve being a game designer, but not exactly that. And also, I'm partly a developer, so uh, as a game designer, I like to be able to come up and with my own thing and, and build them. And I build kind of like a lot of like really small things that is explore feelings, emotions, uh, relationships. Uh, so you can uh, have a look in my itch.io page if you want, but today, I want to show you something that never happened. It might happen in the future, but it never happened till now. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good idea of like thinking about you know the projects that you never finish. Uh, what does it mean? What can you take away from them? Because I think it's very important uh, not to demonize the fact that you can also fail sometimes, or you know you can just like leave it like it is. So, yeah, uh, I think, uh, can I start showing something? Uh, yeah, what do you yeah, think? definitely. Um, but, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, maybe, maybe just yeah. a couple of questions now. Um, I know that you want to show one of your projects now. Yes. Uh, one of your projects that actually didn't really make it, as, you know, <laughs> otherwise you wouldn't be here, right? You wouldn't be... Yeah, not exactly. Yet. But um, my question is, how many of those projects do you have? So you've been working in the gaming industry for a few years. Approximately, how many oh my God. have you lost? <laughs> how many projects that is lost? that is a really hard thing to say because uh, so, so uh, I think the first that I have uh, it's from the early two thousand, so uh, it's quite long ago. Uh, that is something that I know, I don't know if I'm at the freedom to show at some point, but I don't know even if it works, but like involved people going in graveyards and taking photos. It was really crazy. And it's perfect, it's perfect <laughs> then, right? Yeah, it was, it was fun times. What can I say? But I think, yeah, I think, I mean, there's uh, at least one project every month or so that doesn't make it or, you know, but when I review the things, the thing is like things that, have been done in a project that didn't make it, then just move to another one and to another one. And you can't really say, oh, I'm, I, I've done like 30 different projects because a lot of stuff you recycle and also a lot of the things that the concepts that you have, you kind of like retry them in a different way. So uh, even like this one has been reborn like three or four times, I think. From the ashes. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I've got like this weird approach when I like look back and 
observe what I've done or what I haven't done. And, and I'm like, oh, this thing actually was interesting. I, I try to take it back and see if I can uh, revamp it or uh, it can, it's mature then for becoming something. So, you know, it's, it's hard to like, I, I work in a very fuzzy way. So it's hard to say, oh, these are the projects that never come to a completion because some of them are still around in one way or another. So, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Then, yeah, I guess if you want, you can start sharing your screen and hopefully we can, uh, we can start yeah. it. Um, in the meantime, I have a few people uh, joining the chat. So, hi, Josephine. Hi, cool. Ahmed. Hi, Krishnan. <laughs> Uh, and as always, if you want, you just feel free to um, to leave a comment in the chat. Uh, you probably won't appear here, but we'll we'll reading it. So I will definitely um, I will definitely show it to um, tell it to Fede if there's any question that uh, you want us to answer. So um, Fede, I'm sharing the screen, so uh, you can you can probably start yeah. showing your game. And... All right, cool. Uh, so uh, a few words about this before before I start getting into it. So this is probably the first iteration of this project, uh, which was called the Neon, northeast of nowhere. It was like the super stupid thing. But uh, I mean, just bear with me. It was a difficult moment. <laughs> but, like, so so uh, that is, yeah, it always is. You know, so uh, um, the thing is, I was really fascinated about translating pixel art and very, very low-fi kind of thing into 3D. So I started mapping uh, sample textures uh, done in pixel art on 3D tiles and working like with a tile set and you can kind of see it in the top window that like the whole thing is kind of tile based. I'm making a first person something, uh, which shoot? I didn't know what it was. Can you shoot? So what? No, you do, no, you don't shoot. Yeah, you, don't you shoot never shoot in my game. games. I, I no, sometimes you do. That. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I actually made one where you shoot like aliens and then you eat them. I mean, yeah, that was like <laughs> another time. But anyway, uh, no, this, uh, so the thing is, I'm really, really fascinated about a certain kind of like 80s, early 90s aesthetic uh, with a lot of like neons and bright light. I'm a massive fan of the first Tron. Uh, like that was, that is one of my favorite movies and I always cry when I see it. Even if it's not that a great movie, I'm but you. I love I'm it. Judging you very uh, badly and, and so I was like into... I'm judging you very badly. What? Now. I mean, it's like, let's be frank. Tron, Tron is a great movie, but it's also not a great movie. Like. As a movie, it's not so like you know. It's like a I think, kind of I think like silly basic that well. story. Let's go with certain aspects of it has an age. It has an age that well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was like for the time was incredible, and and you know, uh, Jeff Bridges in this like neon suit was like so fucking cool, and you know, it was amazing. And anyway, uh, so I kind of just put this two things together, and I started doing that. And now, before I start, I want to tell you a thing. The problem is when you, when you do these things, and this is like it can be for like six, seven years ago or something. Uh, the problem is that Unity goes on, and this is being made in Unity. So the problem, you know, some things just stop working. So you you do this thing where you just scavenge, and it's you you are like an archaeologist and and try to make it surface. Uh, let me just make this window a little bit bigger so you can see. So basically, uh, right now, there is no interactivity at all in this thing because uh, I couldn't recover all the scripts that were there. So you have to imagine these things all react to your uh, gaze. So if you if you were looking, for example, at this style with its like sort of face, it would just start trembling for a while. And it was re literally just me experimenting with playful kind of things. So right now there is just the environment and there's not much of, uh, you know, interactivity. But I want to show you, uh, nevertheless, what, what was, you know, the first uh, kind of iteration. And when I say when I say bright colors, I really mean it. And, uh, you, you know, I really love this sort of like blooming things everywhere and just having like, uh, you know, sparkles everywhere, really joyful. It became darker and darker where I was uh, developing it. 
So basically, this is just like this environment. And I wanted to have this sort of arcadey kind of look when you have a lot of parts that are completely dark and the lights kind of guiding you around. Uh, and for example, these hearts here, uh, right now they are all lit. But what happened when you, when you entered the room, they just started lighting uh, based on the distance. And yeah, the script doesn't work anymore. So, uh, so that is like, uh, you know, uh, how it is right now. But I think like I, I, I was really into this uh, aesthetic and I'm kind of like as a game designer, I'm the kind of person that I, I have a training in actually comic writing and um, 3D art uh, before I started being a game designer. Uh, so the thing is, uh, uh, I really I really like to start with a like a visual, uh, a visual kind of style that gives me a mood and you know a sort of uh, um, a feeling, uh, and then just work out what kind of game can I make out of this. And here, this one, uh, this first scene, uh, which as I said, it's not interactive yet. It was kind of like a puzzle, uh, sort of like a, a, a puzzle game where there were like rotating rooms, and you had to figure out how to rotate them to unlock different other rooms. And then at the end, you could choose to get one of two objects that were uh, a nice uh, lolly or a pepper thing because it was like are you spicy or are you cold that was kind of like the weird idea that i had uh so yeah that's that's pretty much uh that uh but then i have a couple of more scene to to show you uh which are like uh, one other that is like purely aesthetical and and the final one that would be uh a little bit more interactive. Yeah, I, th I think I think that's quite, so, uh, that's quite a nice project. Now, um, I have a couple of questions. So um, the first one is, cool. um, of course, you know, you're basically you're um, reimporting the projects now this week, basically for <laughs> exactly for these um, for our chat. <clears throat> but my question is, I can mm -hmm. see the title of the project is Neon Reboot 2018 which to me suggests a yes. history of <laughs> rebooting. So how, what, how many times this project has been re killed and resurrected, basically? My, my god, that is, a, that is embarrassing. Uh, at least three <laughs> or four times, I guess. Yeah, uh, across the years. So it's like one of those th things that you, uh, you come back to it and you're like, Oh, this actually looked really good. I want to do something with that, and and you don't, and then then it kind of just uh, wraps into itself. But I mean, it, it's fine. Uh, it's, it's it's been a good way for me to learn a lot of things, uh, and also to understand the way I like to make people interact with the game. So I think it's fine. It's uh, it's been like a a, a training gem for me <laughs> for for other projects so uh, so you know it's uh, it's still a good and, thing um, i kind of like the idea that you sort of mentioned at the beginning that you work on a project but a lot of the time you can sort of reuse a lot of what what you've been working on on, on that project and that is definitely true for me so every time i make something new i have a new function and maybe i i need and i think hmm, maybe maybe i could really reuse this one so he ended up building up this library of functions that I carry with me basically in every in every new project, and it grows. It really grows, but um, you know I think it's 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 still very it's still very useful for me because he has um, all these sort of uh, all these sort of functions that I'm getting familiar with, and so for me I don't know I don't know for you, but for me it means that the next time I have to make something, I already know how to make those kind of things. And I have some functions, I have some methods that um, I can I can basically exploit. I know how to exploit them very well and to build things with them. They're like Lego bricks that I know really well. And I think it allows me to build things faster and faster. And maybe, maybe this is why, yeah. um, for example, you see a lot of people um, doing things like Ludum there. You know, there was one just, you know, a few days ago. Um, some people build amazing stuff and you're wondering how it's even possible that they managed to build something like that. And well, it's because what you don't see is that those people didn't really have two days or a weekend. They actually had years of work and experience 
that was somehow leaked into yeah. their own um, their own libraries, and so they know how to reuse them because they've done it 50 million times, probably. Do you have something similar about that? No, yeah, definitely. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I just started making a small library for people that want to make a uh, kind of walking simulator or kind of like exploration games. Um, maybe based on story. And a lot of the code that, uh, that I'm using in this library comes from this, uh, this project and others. So there is a lot of, you know, uh, figuring out how to detect if I'm looking at something and if I'm interested in, 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 in a particular object that I'm seeing uh, and, and things like that. Uh, that I really like because I, I really like to be non-explicit when I do my game design. So having like little things that react to something that you do without even realizing that you're doing that. So that is like um, definitely has been like a, a really, really precious for that. But not only that, uh, there's also the, a, another component, which is like that everything that you have done, it sets a foundation for something else. For example, uh, right now, the uh, neon effect that you that you look at has been perfected. Uh, I mean, it's still the bloom effect from Unity, but uh, the way I visualize the, the little textures in, in pixel art, actually I made a shader for that, that lets me on the fly choose uh, if I want that particular type to be ultra transparent, uh, if I want to, to use particular other effects that, that I can show you later. And so, you know, uh, it's it's always, um, it's been like a good set of, you know, things that I knew how to do in code and then I learned how to do in shaders. Uh, so now I'm kind of just building exactly what I want, what I need for, for the project without having to, you know, have a work around with the PBR shader and the, the standard shaders in Unity for doing exactly what I want to do. Uh, so, so that is like, uh, that is another thing. Like everything that you build is like a small building block and it can grow and it can become something else. And that's why also I have a lot of fun just retaking old projects and, and revamping them. Um, I actually, when I, when, I, uh, when I worked on this scene and the others, I had a lot of fun just thinking about, oh, now I can, I'm kind of reviving all this stuff. Uh, and it was really, yeah, it was really fun, but also uh, it, it's, it helps giving you motivation, I think, because it tells you, hey, you were doing quite cool stuff. Why don't we so, um, build up how, on that? How hard are you finding to um, go back to an old project you worked on? Because I, can, I imagine this probably something you worked on, well, given the name, probably for three or four years. So, um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's more. Um, so how, how hard are you finding the idea of looking back at code you wrote maybe five years ago? And how, how does it work for you to, 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 look, to look at your past like that? I mean, it's always, uh, I think it's always uh, a very good exercise because uh, you kind of understand, like, uh, to me, it, it gives all, always positive feelings, to be honest, because uh, uh, even like if I if I look at the code, uh, some of the code that I did for this probably, yeah, some of the code was not really good. Um, but I'm not like the kind of person that says, uh, oh, what bunch of like bullshit that I wrote. Uh, oh, just how bad was this game? But I kind of look at it uh, as, oh, that's taught me so many things uh, and also now I can code it better uh, or uh, A, this thing were just was uh, not that bad actually. It was uh, it was quite interesting and it uh, deserves uh, like a uh, better treatment probably. And you know, there is there is also this thing that I really kind of, uh, I, I'm always quite exposed to imposter syndrome and, and things like that. And looking at this project back, Actually, uh, it's a good way to measuring yourself. Uh, and if you compare to other people, it's really hard. But if you compare with like your past self, it's it's easier to see. Oh, but actually, in like one year or two years, uh, I did so many things, uh, and I went so further away. And also, I did this thing two years ago, which wasn't like entirely terrible, uh, and it still need still deserves to be to be seen and to be saved. Uh, in one way. So I think like that, 
aspect of failure. If you want to call it, I don't even want to call it failure because to me, not finishing a project is not necessarily a failure, but let's call it failure if we want. It's not like something that is bringing you somewhere else, right? So you have to take into account this, I think, that like this past experience build you your present self. Um, and that's beautiful. I think it's really, really interesting because um, I see a lot of these, for example, with students, you know, a um, lot of lot of the students that that I have that maybe that you have as well. I don't know. You you let me tell me. Um, they they often feel very um, insecure about the code they make, and what sometimes it's hard to realize is that um, making a game and working in the game industry very often means keep challenging yourself. So you never reach the point, or at least you know, it's very hard to reach the point where you feel, yeah, I learn everything I need to know. There is nothing more I need to know. Um, this is super easy. It's stuff I've already done. Because usually, if you've done that, it means that you're not bringing innovation. You know, you're not, you're not pushing yourself. You're just like you know, uh, mechanically yeah. making the same game over and over again. And then, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe your studio lives out of you know releasing games like that but if you're especially like an indie want to do innovation you want to bring um, you know so to spice up uh, a bit game development then you're always constantly challenging challenging yourself so this can create i think this sort of um paradoxical situation where you get a lot of experience but you're constantly feeling like what you're doing is not good enough and the reason is, is, is very simple. The yeah. reason is that you're constantly doing something new, so you're always working on a new challenge. And I think that it, some people don't realize that games development is about that most of the time. It's especially, you know, especially stuff like Unity that changes so rapidly. Um, for example, the, the teaching material I've done two, three years ago when I was at LCC, it's rubbish now. Well, I mean, it, it was good that, yeah. but Unity has changed so much that even the interface now is different. So, um, the, I feel that even even now that I, I'm a senior uh, Unity developer, that's how I would classify myself. I feel that uh, a new update of Unity com comes out, and I'm like, oh, I'm a junior developer again now, because I have to relearn, <laughs> you know, all yeah. the all the all the things and. And I feel this for me, it, it's a big problem. Uh, what, what do you think about it? I feel like, yeah, it's like that thing is kind of like my blessing and my curse at the same time. Because uh, I'm a person that really likes it. I'm a very curious person. I'm really, I really like to learn new things. Uh, and I try to learn new things as much as I can. But that brings you to that sort of like... Uh, situation where you just keep learning and never actually do anything because because you want to learn a, a, a new thing so uh, it's kind of double-edged and you have to find the balance on that because otherwise uh, either you don't do anything or you're just like crystallizing something and you, you never evolve um, and it's it's very hard. Uh, it, it's a very a hard balance, I think, uh, because of what you have said, uh, exactly of what you've said, because because we don't realize that we are like constantly doing new things and we don't perceive that as, you know, uh, that big deal. And we feel like failures because we feel like, oh, uh, but I didn't do anything. I'm very insecure about you, my code and, and, and stuff like that. There's also another aspect that is like, we have this illusion that game developer, like we don't know the code of other people, right? And we went see when we see the code of other people, then we kind of understand that everybody has their moment where they just like make it work. And it's not elegant and it's not beautiful to look at. It's not particularly clever. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, that is another hard balance, you know, finding that the, the correct balance between doing something that is really, um, that is really um, elegant and well made versus something that just works. Uh, and and I think uh, when I think about that, I think a lot about uh, I I did martial arts for a while when I was uh, when I was a kid, uh, and and that taught me a lot because when you do martial arts, you know you learn this like beautiful 
traditional forms, uh, it'd be like if you do karate, called kata, uh, if, if you're doing kung fu, a slight traditional form or whatever. And these traditional forms are, are all about, you know, making this perfect movement perfectly timed, perfectly like a perfect control of your muscles and of your body, be really, really self-aware. And then, you know, you do like combat with other people uh, because it's another part of martial arts often, right? And when you are in combat, you, you think, oh, now I'm applying all this beautiful thing that I'm making. But actually, when you are in that situation, you do your best. And it's not like it's way rougher. So we have to teach people that when you are in production, the code is necessarily not always that elegant. Sometimes you have just to make it work, which is like, I think it, it, it's a skill in itself. Oh, just one thing. Um, do you mind maybe turning off the screen share so maybe yeah. we can see you better? I think that might... We can, we can turn it on oh, later maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something else. So um, this actually um, yeah. reminds me of... Um, yeah, I can see you much better. Yeah, stop it. Yeah. Um, this actually um, reminds me of um, one time when um, I went to the, uh, I think it was the DNA, and they were trying to, um, it was a few years ago, many years ago, they were trying to build these um, exhibition about games that I think mm -hmm. they've done now. Um, and basically something they were really interested in is the fact that um, when you have like an historical artifact, you know, you can preserve it, and if it's a piece of art, just the fact that you can look at it, you know, it fulfills its, you know, its purpose. And they were really interested in having games that you can still play in the same way they were supposed to be, you know, consumed to be used. Um, so we had a sort of conversation where it was like, oh, but what, what do we need to be able to play like a Nintendo game on like a Nintendo, a Game Boy uh, in 200 years? And I was like, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure that is that is something you can you know it's of course much more complicated problem and I think that <laughs> this somehow connects to the challenges you were discussing originally when you started talking about resuming the project and the fact yeah. that for example you talk about the bloom filter and I know the unit has changed the way you do you do bloom like seventy five times probably from you know Unity five to um, to Unity, I don't even know what version we are now. Uh, 2019.3, maybe? 2019.3. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yes. I haven't installed that yet. Uh, I'm only committing to LTS versions, Ooh. you know, because otherwise, you know. I'm one of the crazy ones that <laughs> is always yeah, on the cutting edge yeah. and then just like. <laughs> But Don't yeah, do I'm... that, it's terrible. It's, it's just like me making bad life decisions. <laughs> I know, I, th I think it's, it's an actual, it's a very big problem because sometimes um, you, um, you wrote a lot of stuff, but that kind of stuff you cannot actually, um, you cannot actually uh, reuse it because when you look back at it, it's dead. You know, and yeah. the code used to work, but now it doesn't work anymore. And I feel that this is such a big problem. I have so many projects that, um, especially in Python, maybe you need to, you can sort of rescue it, but yeah. in Python, I have so many projects, they dead. I have no idea how to resurrect them because the libraries have changed, the support have changed. And, and I think it's a, big, it's a big problem. Yeah, it is. We're heading towards a future where, um, there's so much there's so much effort trying to rescue like uh, NES games and you know MS DOS games, and it's sort of doable because the system is fairly compact. But now you know how are we going to save Flash games, and how are we going to save Unity games? Some of the old ones that are already yeah. are already not uh, you know not watchable, uh, no not playable anymore. I think this is this is quite a big. A big problem. Do you have any idea about that? No, definitely. Uh, it's it's a big problem. It's a big problem, and we need definitely we need historians, we need archivists, we need archaeologists for that. Because uh, right now, I'm thinking like we are starting to lose the games from the 70s and the early 80s, the arcade games in particular, because uh, the way they were made, uh, you can't really 
preserve the hardware because the hardware is also decaying. But the, but the software is decaying way faster, I think. And it's it's hard to do. Like you don't always have the chance to make it to do a porting. And there's no really. I I don't think. I don't think there is a uh, a solution right now for that, other than you know uh, try to port as much as possible. Like I know that a lot of flash games have been found like a way to become like uh, an executable. But you know, ten, uh, twenty years from now, do we st- we will still have executables? I don't know. And it's really hard because uh, this thing don't really. It's really hard to leave a trace. And you know, uh, for me, like as long as it's just like scavenging a project out of Unity, it's fine. But you know, when when it becomes something more important, like I think, really think that we are, you know, a lot of games are culture, uh, and our cultural artifact that are really important to preserve. Then what we do, uh, and I'm afraid I don't really have an answer for that uh, because uh, uh, because it's really like it's something that transcend, transcends um, my expertise, I guess, and it should be like I think addressed. Uh, by archivists and archaeologists really uh, figuring out how to still make things work, uh, which is not easy at all. I, I, yeah, I think it's it's a big problem. And to be honest, it's yeah. something that really terrifies me. Like yeah. this idea, and it's something I think about quite often, is the idea that we are in this sort of, um, you know, age of information, you know, whatever that means. We are producing like petabytes of data every second. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not that much. Uh, but... The problem is that most of it is going to be lost. First of all, not all of it, of course, is important, but I think that um, a lot of archaeologists maybe are more interested in the life of common people more than the life of you know extraordinary men and women that made history. And I think that there's so much, in, you know, maybe Doom and Super Mario will survive, but how many people on a daily basis play those games? You know, maybe. Yeah. It's more. I'm more interested about the fact that we have an entire library uh, of um, indie games that are going to be lost forever. For example, yeah. I made Orbitalis, which is in Flash, you know, terrible choice, and it's already dead. In a sense that, as much as I would love to update it, it's not going to happen because I physically cannot because of Flash. It's so yeah. hard to do it that it's dead. If if I'm the developer and I can't do it. No, nope, no, nope, this game is not going to carry out in the future, and I think you know it's a big, it's a big problem. We are going to lose it is. so much of the games that we have, um, that we have today. I think ninety nine point nine percent of those games are simply going to be lost, especially because so many games needs a server to be played. Fortnite. What happens to Fortnite when a server yeah. is going yeah, to be yeah, shut yeah. down in one hundred years? Nobody can play the game because it's. It's um, dedicated technology. Nobody's going to rescue it. So, you know, um, I think it's it's quite a big problem because, in the same way, it happens to um, to Facebook that soon is going to have more dead people than alive people. <laughs> we probably already have more dead games that, you know, not games that didn't make it, but games that we cannot physically play anymore. Yeah, yeah. Than you know, games that we can actually play, and I think that. This is, you know, we're losing so much, and it's it's something that it it, it it's really invisible. And you know, I was saying something I'm often thinking about is that maybe now we know it, but maybe in a thousand years they will find, you know, people will find a city rom and think, oh, that's a nice piece of jewelry, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's it's I you know it seems silly, but. The same is happening uh, with, you know, ancient Egyptian stuff. <laughs> we find yeah. stuff and it's like, oh, what this could be? Um, this could be blah, blah. You know, and they have theories for something that everyone at the time would be, of course, it, it, it's obvious what it is, right? It's not. Especially because, you know, maybe nobody uh, is thinking about taking an electron uh, scanning microscope and looking, you know, the grooves of the city around. Yeah. Like, oh, that that's a cool... That's a cool texture, you know, um, and this terrifies me in a way because it means yeah. that so much of what we're producing, it's lost. 
and maybe even a CD, uh, you know, CDs and, and um, VHS cassettes, you can sort of guess that they are um, memory storage units. But a USB stick, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's a solid yeah. memory. You cannot, you cannot see what's inside without destroying it. So uh, we're heading for a future that, you know, uh, so much is going to be lost. And I think it's, yeah. it's a thought that really terrifies me at times. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it is like at least a sad uh, uh, thought, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I relate with that because uh, you know that there, there are already like a lot of pieces of culture that are getting lost because uh, we didn't think of making copies. And you know, sometimes it's just like you, you can, you can think and say, okay, but it's just pop culture. It doesn't really matter. But it really talks about who we are, like as a, as human beings. So I, I always find pop culture being more important than we want to admit. So, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, you... shall, shall I go on with another thing? Yeah, definitely. Thank... You want to share your screen again? Yes. Uh... Sorry, you know I digress a lot, right? So I often... Yeah, no, 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 but it's fine. I mean, it's, it's, a very, it's actually a very interesting conversation. So, um, which brings me uh, to this. This is like the next one. I promise that the next one is more interactive. But this is the second kind of iteration that I did of the project, and and I started building this room, uh, and uh, and I started like the the um, sort of thing that went on was starting playing with transparency and not thinking, okay, uh, I make everything like dark blocks, but I can uh, make things that are passed through, uh, and they give even more like this uh, sort of neon effect. And this idea of that was uh, uh, to create uh, for this a sort of hub for the game where you could uh, collect this little uh, disks and put it in the jukebox. Uh, and if you put one of the disks in the jukebox, then it will open uh, a door here and you will be projected in a different level of the game. So that was uh, the general idea that uh, hasn't been uh, really fully developed. Uh, but yeah, um, and I also here started playing with animations. So uh, so I started uh, trying to figure out what if I dynamically change the, the texture? Uh, what if I, uh, you know, I use, uh, like in this case, uh, uh, I use a gradient to control the um, the emissive value, uh, so I can have something that kind of like does uh, this this sort of uh, more dynamic effect. Uh, and yeah, this this was uh, I think uh, this might have been seven years ago or so, something like that. So this this thing is just like being with me for, for a long, long time, I think it's becoming my best friend now. <laughs> it's just like, uh, uh, it's like, it's like, me, like, it's really like meeting an old friend. It's just like, oh, how long it was, right? Oh, uh, that you, was like me, meeting me from the past. Yeah. Do you ever go back to your old projects? Like, uh, maybe not this one, but are there like projects or games that every now and then you sort of think, mm, I should have, it's not like, it's dead, but in, inside me it's still alive you know do you have that often or? no definitely 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 uh that's this one that's another one uh at least uh which i started working with like sort of vaporwave kind of uh environment uh and then yeah i did crazy thing with statues and stuff uh that was another one that uh, it's another one that kind of comes back from time to time so yeah definitely there, there, there's that and there is like a, you know i got like a lot of like a, like every game designer i got a lot of notebooks and sometimes i just like look uh into the notebooks from the past and it's like oh, this was actually a really cool idea actually it happened to me this funny thing uh, at some point i was uh, reviewing this notebook where i used to write a single game idea every day like a game mechanic idea every day to just start to just jotting down stuff. <laughs> and I wrote one, I promise. Like I, I have a photo, I still have the notebook as well. I, I need to scavenge it. I can I can show you it another time if you want. Uh, there was this game idea that was almost perfectly 80 days. <laughs> like 80 days the game. I was like, 
oh, I'm not the one thinking about that. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, you know, it happens. Uh, I mean, it's not that, you know, uh, doing a game about 80 days is, uh, is not, you know, the, the, uh, it, the most original idea. And the team that did 80 days did an amazing job in making it really original and different, uh, starting from, like, you know, a text that was really, really known. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was fun to see... Uh, it's not, I'm not the only one thinking of the things, and I know that because it's normal. Uh, it happens all the time that you you know you have ideas, and other people have the same idea or just a very similar one. Uh, so it's it, it's not important because the way you think about it is it's always very different. Um, so yeah, uh, this is this is another one. Uh, I will stop sharing the screen now. Uh, so if you want to chat a little bit more, and then I will show the. Uh, the last one. So um, something that, um, you know, you were sort of casually mentioning, and I find it quite interesting, is that we've seen a couple of, you know, scenes and prototypes. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've been a bit mean, you know, in defining them as sort of dead, right? So I'm saying, you know, it's a graveyard, they corpse us, you know, and that those games are dead, so you're dead. And I think that, for me, the problem is that this gives a very mm, negative connotation to what you're working on. I mean, I'm yeah. using it as a funny term, but I think the problem, the main problem for me is that the risk is to say that because a game wasn't a commercial success, it was a failure as a game. Yeah. And it's such a big problem that um, it drives me crazy. And I think one of the reasons why I wanted to have a series where I look at games that didn't make it, it's because some of my favorite games are games that have never been released. And, you know, it, it sounds silly, but it's true because I, I know I had the chance of playing some of those games because yeah. I knew a lot of developers. So, you know, I'm a developer, you're a developer. We've done a lot of events. So we had the chance to play a lot of prototypes. And some yeah. of the best games I've seen are games that have not been released. Or, you know, games that never managed to to quite make it or they didn't catch you know mainstream attention and i think that then as a reflection you sort of say oh because the game wasn't a success because it didn't make a trillion pounds because it didn't sell a billion copies then the game is a failure and i'm ah oh, it drives me crazy so much because then it reduces the success of a game which is a lot of things, you know, it's the, yeah. the marketing, it's a game design, it's aesthetic, it's a setting, it's all kind of sort of different art styles, it's sort of not art, like different arts coming together that, um, that you know, are sort of, um, you say, oh, they're all failed, somehow they all yeah. failed because the game didn't sell, and maybe the only thing that failed is the commercial, you know, the, the, the marketing. Yeah, 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 yeah. What but I think, yeah, there is like, uh, that, that, that is a thing that touches like one of my, my, uh, my ideas that I, I, I like to tell time, uh, every time. And it's like, this is a very capitalistic idea, right? Because you're doing it, you're making a thing, but if the thing doesn't sell, doesn't monetize, then it's a failure. Yeah. But it's not like, it's not necessarily like that. Uh, and it can be like even games that don't sell can be really useful for, can be really interesting for people, can give like an interesting message. But it's not only that. It's, it's also like how we treat failure and how we define it uh, that I feel it's problematic. Uh, because, you know, we, we kind of we think, okay, you have failed. That is like something that, didn't happen, but actually, it's never something that didn't happen. You still s started something. You still put something out there. You know, you still even if you didn't publish it, if, even if it's in 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 your hard drive, it's something that you have built. It's something that you have done, and and it's something that didn't exist before. And it has it matters just for that. Uh, but we are like so you know involved into this like whole idea of success, which sometimes is really distorted because, as you said, uh, it's not necessarily commercial success, but sometimes it's just like oh uh, you know for me like uh, some of the games that I made maybe like ten people uh, played them, 
but then they came to me and they were like, oh, you know what, what, what you did really resonate with me. And for me, that is success because it's like, it's what I want to do. If I want to do something, I want to share it with someone. Uh, and I would like to, you know, to do something that resonates with another human being and having like this conversation happen. Uh, but I, I, I reckon that that's not how the industry works. Uh, but I think we should also take pride in, in you know, in these things uh, that we make, even if they are not commercial um, and even if they are not successful, because if they are not commercial, they can still resonate with someone else. If they're not successful in the sense that they are not finished, they have still taught you something. At the very least, they have taught you something about yourself, uh, about who you are or who you were in, in a certain period of time, which I think is extremely valuable. I, I really believe in the power of making games as a form of, if you want, even therapy. It's a form of like really? putting yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, for me, like definitely there's like, there's one particular game that's on itch.io. I'm not sure I want to tell you which one is it. Uh, but you can figure it out easily that every time that I play it again, I was like, this is the person that I was like a few years ago. Um, I, I'm really proud of like what I did in the meantime. I'm really proud of who I was at that time and how I reacted. And that's a lot of, you know, that's sort of stuff. It happens more in personal game, but I think even like, you know, whichever video game you make, you put yourself into that, even if it's not specifically personal. So that is like, I, I think it's another really important aspect uh, that we should take into account, I, I think, um, because I think it's powerful for, for yourself. And it's like, it's the same thing of, you know, doing any other kind of art. If you write or if you draw, you can do it for yourself. You can write a journal or you can write poems. And it's not like that, the fact that you, have done that is more or less important if you then publish it, right? It's still important because you have still created something out of nothing, which is like a very human thing to do. And also, like, I think it's interesting that um, we very quickly classify, you know, games have failed if they didn't achieve, you know, commercial success and the other way around. But yeah. um, a lot of artists that now we would consider like, you know, influential and, you know, their pieces, you know, their artwork is now sold you know, for millions of pounds. The people that maybe they died, you know, in absolute yeah. poetry and they were yeah. discovered in the past. I'm not saying I'm not saying that this is going to happen to developers because by the very nature of games and the fact that they need to run on something, if the developer dies, the game probably die with, with them. <laughs> Especially if they're not if they're not published, you know, it's a bit more complicated than that. Um, but you know, the fact that the, there were pieces of art that nobody considered them worthy. And years later, the, you know, the ideas of what their value changed. And I think that this means that if, if your game doesn't make it, if your game doesn't achieve commercial success, you know, it's not a reflection on the game. It's not a ref and, you know, moreover, it's not a reflection on yourself. And I think it's something that a lot of people don't don't feel like that, especially if they um, if they want to make a living out of games. It gets very tricky because, of course, you need your games to be commercially successful. And then what happens is the opposite: that instead of making games that uh, making your games commercially successful, you're making games that will be commercially successful by the fact that they're very mainstream, and you're going to make a clone yeah. of. Angry Birds, or a clone of yeah, exactly. Birds, or a clone of Crossy Road. <laughs> you see the pattern. no, exactly. That's that's yeah, no, that's that's a very very important thing that you said, because uh, that is like what kills creativity in the end. The fact that you if you if you're just pursue, pursuing like success in terms of like making a living out of it, what you might end up doing is doing what everybody else is already doing. Uh, and so uh, it's like, it's a very, I, I think I had this when I was in comic writing school, uh, where like, you know, you had to draw in a certain way, which I absolutely hated and despised, because at that time in Italy, if you wanted to work, you had to do uh, what a certain publisher was doing and nothing else. And that's like a complete creativity killer. 
because you have to you have to too many constraints and constraints are good but when they are too many you you're not yourself anymore you're just like doing what everybody else is doing and that's very dangerous uh so uh so yeah uh i think sometimes and I, and that that's the thing that i really really stress with students actually because students are in this particular condition where they have time to experiment and then they what they do is trying to think oh which kind of game will sell and i put like zombies in it i hate zombies by the way mark my my words zombies are <laughs> completely overrated anyway um you know, and and and, and they're like, uh, oh, I will make this like RPG kind of thing because it's very popular. And I'm like, please don't. I mean, you, you have like one year, like or three years or whatever for entirely for yourself, for experimenting where I'm literally at your service, telling you how I see games, how I, I think you should work on your creativity. Do crazy stuff, please. Don't, don't, don't come to me with a tower defense or whatever, it's just so boring, right? Do something that I never seen before. Do some, show me who you are, most of all. Because also I think if I had to hire people, I would vastly prefer to see portfolio of people that are, um, that are showing themselves through games rather than portfolio of people that show me a really, really well-made homework, like a really well-made shoot them up that has nothing to tell about themselves. Because that, then I think, oh, maybe this person, all they do is playing games and they, do, they are not interested in anything else. But if you want to be a game designer or a good game creator in general, a good game developer, you, don't, you can't stick just to that you have to have this like very broad culture and a very broad like set of interest because that's how your creativity grows i i think it's quite it's quite interesting especially when you have students you know that uh you know are trying to explore i always you know try to encourage my students as well to explore more creative solutions because you know chances are that um you know more more in my degrees that in my course than in yours but chances are that when they're going to work in the industry, they will not have that freedom anymore. So I'm like, yeah. explore now as much as you can, because you probably won't uh, in, in six months. But uh, yeah, Fede, do you want, do you want, do you have something else to show yes. us? Yes. And uh, uh, in the meantime, if you have any question, uh, feel free to write in the, in the chat and uh, hopefully Fede or I will, uh, will be able to, to address them. So, um, so this is like the last iteration. Actually, it has like one of the mechanics that uh, was used since the first one, but it wasn't feasible because in the first one I couldn't re-implement it, uh, which is basically that, uh, oh, I deactivated the crosser. Um, that's maybe not a good decision of me. Let me just reactivate it. Okay, I've got the crosser now, which is, yeah. Uh, so um, basically what I wanted to do is I wanted to do a game where uh, your crosshair can change and can just pick these textures and you can use it like as it was as if you were carrying something. So basically what I'm doing here is like if you look at this, uh, it is like it lacks an animation because it should react to just the fact that you're looking, but it's not important. Um, and then I, I have this uh, zoom function with the... Uh, with the right button. So if I zoom on this, I can capture the texture. And now I have this little cassette tape and now I have a boom box. So what should I do? Uh, I can go here and I can sort of drop it. Oh, and really now nice. this is playing something. And in the meantime, a door is opening. So I can just go on. So the basic of the game was like actually having this little textures that you can capture and you can drop in some other places. And here is another one uh, that is not finished yet, uh, but you, you will have uh, uh, this sort of like uh, texture with a drop. So you will have to find the drop of blood, of blood, and and then deposit it. And then the uh, there is already the code for that, but I don't have the object. And then the heart 
uh, will slowly uh, fill up. Let me see if I can control the heart. I don't remember. This is really like coding. I don't remember if I if I got the code here, so but I think I did. In the meantime, we have a yeah. question from uh, Christian yes. asking, uh, what martial art did you do? Um, so I did mostly Kung Fu. Uh, it was like a sort of weird mix between internal and external style. Uh, and it was really fun. I really loved it. No, I don't think I have <laughs> the, 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 the thing. Yeah, anyway. Uh, so basically, yeah, oops, I stopped it. Um, I just wanted, so uh, the thing is like what I wanted to do here, like this iteration was making something that uh, would have become, um, sorry, oh, there's nice. like the, the, nice. the music play. So it was like, uh, and I, the idea was like turn this into a sort of ASMR experience uh, where you just, you know, look around this thing and you hear like this uh, voices whispering to you. And I was like, what would be like ASMR if it was a game? Uh, and so I started working on it and I didn't really went to the end. Uh, I'll show you another scene that I started working on uh, as an aesthetic. So, at some point, I figure, okay, you will go to a sort of a beach and you will sit down uh, on the edge of the beach and you look at the stars uh, and something like that. Uh, that is all unfinished, unfortunately. But uh, I've got another little scene that I want to show you, this one. Uh, and then I experiment. I want to, to have something that is like set sort of underwater. So I experiment with, you know, layering this sort of uh, uh, art uh, and see how much layering can I do before everything becomes like completely unintelligible. <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, I've got the, you know, little animals uh, and yeah, a little jellyfish and stuff. Uh, and yeah, this is pretty much it. Um, I, I think it's so, really sweet. And um, I, I really like the idea that you can sort of take textures and reapply somewhere else. I think that and you wanted to make it an ASMR game. I would have loved to have that into a proper puzzle game. And I'm already yeah, thinking yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my God, what if you can actually draw um, connections along the wall? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. And then our operators and you can be like a bit of... I'm already... I know. definitely... <laughs> no, but I definitely thought about that because also using the neon kind of metaphor would be really cool to have, you know just connecting two points and have everything light up because before it's like kind of like disconnected so the circuit is broken and, and everything is kind of grayish and then it lives and, and does, does a little show for you. So definitely I thought about that. Uh, I think a part of me wanted to escape to doing just the puzzle game and no, trying to do something. <laughs> But it's like, but it's like, I think it's a, it's a kind of internal fight that I had, you know, uh, kind of thinking, yeah, but I, it, it actually will be really cool uh, making like it a, uh, as sort of a puzzle when I have to solve things and then I, I get rewarded with this sort of, you know, uh, little scenes and light shows and effects. Because I really like the idea of playing with, with light. I think uh, I work quite a lot actually uh, I'm about to do name dropping. Uh, so actually think I worked a little bit uh, on this stuff uh, when we were uh, hanging around at the hack space. <laughs> I uh, and I think, yeah, and I think, I think Robin's, Robin Baumgarten word work really influenced uh, the sort of stuff, you know, he, he does it physically with LEDs and I was like, oh, I can do like a thing that is like with instead of LEDs, I have pixels that are really bright and, and do like light stuff. Phil, if you want, you can uh, turn this share screen off. So um, the screen share off. Oh. So we can, uh, we can go back Sorry, to I, the... Uh... I thought... I think it's off. Oh, it's is off. it off? Okay, okay. Because yeah. if it's not off, it, it leaves the last image, so I, I, I can't tell. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, but I, I, haven't, I haven't told you. I, yeah. I think it's really cool. Like, um, you know, of course, I love puzzle games. Um, mm -hmm. And for me, the idea of being able to sort of uh, change the world by swapping textures, I think you can make yeah. oh, so many crazy puzzles like that. And it can go, um, you know, it's, it's an idea that I think you could resurrect. 
uh, yeah, no, that... from any other, you know, from any other game. Even in, you know, doesn't have to be a Minecraft style or a Voxel style or any style. But I think that you know, it's it's really cool idea the fact that you can sort of build things or unlock yeah, yeah, puzzles yeah. just by putting things together. Maybe one on top of the other and some tiles transform themselves. I don't know. It yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. That's that's the sort of thing that I was exploring, and uh, this the the very idea was: what if I have this little scenes that you can, you know, interact with just by dropping something or transforming something, and you know, uh, I don't know. You you have a fish, and you might I I don't know. You just like give the fish something to eat and the fish becomes bigger and then starts start chasing other fish or something like that. I don't know. You know, it's just, yeah, I know definitely, definitely something that I really would like to work on. Also, I've got this terrible thing that I tend uh, most of the time to work by myself and working by yourself is never gets a lot of stuff done because uh, at some point you will have, you will need to uh, team up with other people, but um, I'm re really shy asking other people, hey, do you want to make this? Because I, I always feel it's not like what I'm doing. It's just, you know, oh, but that matters to me, probably doesn't matter to other people. So um, so it's, uh, it's kind of like, a, yeah, uh, it's another w one of those traps that uh, you can fall into, not asking for help and not showing this sort of stuff uh, beforehand and having people telling, hey, actually, this is, you know, interesting and you can do this and that, and that helps uh, you motivate a lot. But, um, so um, I think, you know, if there aren't any more questions, mm -hmm. uh, I, know, I think it was, it was really nice to see a project that I actually had a chance to see a few years ago. Uh, <laughs> because I remember from the Axpace that we were actually talking about yeah. this over uh, teas and, 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 and cakes. I don't know if avocado toasts were things back then yet. Uh, yeah, but, I think they were. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's really nice to see that the project um, is in the graveyard, but it's still in your heart. You know, every now and yeah, then you yeah, still yeah. visit the project with flowers <laughs> <laughs> on, on its folder. I think it's quite... I'm Nice. I'm still like a Dr. Frankenstein or Herbert West if you're more refined <laughs> and try to reanimate things. Oh, aren't we all? Like, I have, <laughs> I have so many projects every now and then I try to bring back to life. Doesn't always yeah. work, but I'm always trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think, you know, that's, that's the important bits. But um, so. Thank you so much, Fede, for being with me tonight. And uh, thank you for having me. We had, yeah, we had, thank you for having me. Quite a few Sorry. people watching, so you know, I'm, 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 I hope they, I hope they enjoyed it, and um, yeah. you know, I'm very keen in having more guests if this is something that uh, you know you all enjoyed. Um, I think that it's really nice for me to show my own projects, but there's a limited number of projects that are polished <laughs> enough that I can talk about them for one hour. Uh, the vast majority, you know, it's really bad stuff that it's completely broken. Um, so I think that, you know, bringing people can be a really good way to have a bit more interactivity and, you know, spark a discussion that it's, uh, it's interesting, you know. Um, Fed and I actually work together, like literally we share an office together. Um, so, you know, maybe this could be a recurring, a recurring thing, but I'm very keen on showing some more of my project and to bring um, some other guests to, uh, to, this, to this show, to this show as well. Um, so again, Fede, um, thank you so much for for being here with me tonight. I know you have thank other you. things to do, so I will not I will not kidnap <laughs> you for that's fine for too long. Um, and uh, and yeah, uh, thank you again for being with me tonight. And hopefully, we will have a chance of doing this again, maybe next month. Who knows? <laughs> thank you so much. Right. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.